Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be using some scribble skits to make a quick art journal page in i6x16 a weekly journal. So I, um, I completed this page after watching a demonstration. Dina Wakely during March and April, and hopefully she keeps going, has been doing um, daily demos using lots of her different products which is available if you go to the Art of Dina Wakely blog you can see all the videos that she's created and I, I highly highly suggest you go and watch them because it's like having a, a daily lesson with Dina um, but one of them she talked about was scribble sticks now I've always struggled slightly with scribble sticks um, and I found one of the reasons was I wasn't putting enough scrubble, scribble stick down. So you can see in my background that I've just created, I've really laid down lots and lots of colour. And I've got this really intense colour going down on my page. And um, it was just so freeing. And the fact that I was actually getting a result from something that I've really struggled with for so long was really, um, made me really happy. <laughs> And in fact, I use the three colours that I absolutely adore. So the colours I'm using are Cheddar, uh, Fuchsia and Ocean, I think. And um, you can just see how beautiful they are on the page. The other thing is they're a little bit, not more controlled, but um, I really love getting that drip effect. And I struggle to get it sometimes with my acrylic paints I either water them down too much or not enough so I was actually getting really natural drips happening with this process and because it is a school sits they actually dry quite quickly as well so um, it's just a really it's a bonus all around so now all I'm doing is spritzing on some more color so I've dipped the end of the scribble stick into some water and then I'm just using a stiff brush to sort of split the, flick the color across the surface I was trying to leave some white space but for those people who have followed the channel for quite a while know that I really struggle with that so even just having some little dots and dashes and so on in the background that made me feel a little bit happier that um, I didn't have, you know, all that white space there. <laughs> and I'm going to get rid of more white space in a moment anyway. So once I'd finished, I was really happy with my background, but I didn't know what to do next. So while I'm thinking, I'm drying off the surface. You can see me just sponging off the extra. And I was also putting in a little bit more colour because that fuchsia had just died down a little bit. So I just wanted boost that color up a little bit um with the placement of the colors i have carefully thought about how i was going to do it going from the blue into the fuchsia sort of gives you those purpley tones and then from the fuchsia into the um yellow gives you the more orangey tones now obviously because they're mostly primary colors they're all going to sort of mix anyway those two colors but um that's the reason i put them the way i wanted to have them so because I was really pleased with the background, I decided I wanted to use my favourite stencil over this. And for those people, again, who followed this channel for a while, you know it's this um, botanical stencil. So I'm going in with one of my favourite colours, which is the Payne's Grey, and just stenciling out over the top of my scribble sticks, just to give a bit of a focal point to the page. I didn't want to put any collage or anything big over it because I wanted to have that burst of colour in the background. The reason I use the Payne's Grey is because it's, while it's dark it's not black and it's not as intense on the page so it's a lot softer and depending on how you put it in you can actually get it to be semi-translucent in the way you apply it so you can see i'm um, spreading the paint out on my sponge tapping it on my glass mat a few times so it's actually spread out a fair bit and then just tapping it on lightly and i'm you know using the sponge till it really is as dry as possible so I'm trying to get as much paint out of that as possible so you can see I'm going back up and I'm moving the stencil around as well in different directions and making them different heights so I don't have um, everything the same the whole way I'm also when I'm stenciling I like to go off the edges because that looks like the um, image is actually continuing rather than feeling very boxed in on the page so if something looks odd about your stenciling, perhaps have a look at it and see, can I extend it off the page? Is that going to help it in some way, shape or form? 
So once I've dried my paint, I'm then going to do what I always do with the stencil, which is doodle around it. And I don't know why I do this. I just love the effect of it. Um, it's something I first saw um, Adele from Inky Quill. She puts um, outlines around a lot of her stenciled image, and I really I love how that looks. Um, there's the most wonderful artist on Instagram called Megan Wiesner Quinn. Quinlan, who um, again I think has a running love affair with this stencil as well and um, she doodles over the top of it as well and just that simple line work over it just makes the image come alive but it also puts some of you into the page instead of just having a stenciled image it's your hand over the top of it drawing on it so you are connected to that image in some way. I'm not very careful when I do this. You can see I've got really loose strokes and I make it as scribbly as possible intentionally because I've found it looks better. If I have tried tracing around and trying to make it look really neat, I just can't do it. Um, and the reason for that I think is when you deliberately make it loose and sketchy, if a line goes somewhere it's not supposed to, it looks like it's supposed to be there. Whereas if you're trying to be very neat and very geometric and something goes wrong, it's very, very obvious. So it's a good way sort of to cover your mistakes. Um, and it's also really, really freeing. You don't have to think about it. You don't really have to concentrate. You just go for it. You can see on the side of my page, I do have a scrapbook that I've got that I prime my pen on. Um, it is good to have a decent working pen. My pens are coming to the end of their life, so they get a little bit more scratchy. Uh, but if you've got the pens primed up well, um, they'll run really smoothly. The paper in the 6x6 journal is quite heavy and it um, is quite textured, which means if your paint pen sort of goes into it, it can catch and splat across your page. That doesn't really bother me because as you saw with the scribble sticks I like splatting all over my page but for some people that may be an issue. If your pen's primed up well it's less likely to do that. So the final thing that I'm adding onto the page is a quote which says feel what you need to feel then let it go um, which was good because I had lots of stuff on my mind that was bothering me and it sort of summed up that feeling of, you know, yep, it's good to feel it, but you need to make that choice to let it go. Do not let it consume you. So um, in my art journals, I try to give myself advice that I will go back and listen to. Sometimes I don't, but um, yeah, when I see it written there or when I'm thinking about it, when I'm actually writing it out and I'm intentionally writing it out, it gives me an opportunity to actually ponder what I'm writing and think, yeah, okay, you need to do this. So um, I don't know if anyone else does that, but I, I find it therapeutic when I'm doing this that I it gives me that space and time to think, yep, this is what's bothering you, this is what you need to do or this is what you need to focus on. And when I go back and flip through those journals in the future, that's a good life lesson right there. But also by looking at it, it kind of reminds me of where I was and what headspace I was in when I was doing that page. So here's a close up of the final page. Um, you can see that scribble stick works really well. If you don't have access to scribble sticks, any water soluble medium, you could do that with watercolors. Um, in the background, it would work just the same. So um, you don't need to have scribble sticks to do it, but I was just really impressed. I have I've finally kind of worked out how they, they work. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you really find that, that helpful. And again, if you would like to see more of Dina's demos, go to the Art of Dina Wakeley blog, um, and she's got all her videos listed there. Until next time, bye for now.